Now we introduce the rational ethical theories. The first one is Kantianism, or in other words, it is deontologism. You can look at it in Wikipedia. Uh, Immanuel Kant is a philosopher who lived his entire life in East Prussia and he worked as a professor in university. He uh, says that people's actions ought to be guided by moral laws and these moral laws should be, must be universal uh, laws, not based on a culture or something. And in his uh, approach, laws are driven from a reasoning process and can explain why an action is right or wrong. Here, he mentions about the goodwill and the categorical imperative. We will just introduce what they are. And he asked this question, what is always good without qualification, without any, I mean, argument? Intelligence, courage, maybe not, because you can use your courage and intelligence to rob a bank, for example. He argues that the goodwill is important for doing something. I mean, this, this is the only thing good without qualification, the goodwill doing something good or having an idea to do something good. And it is good as long as there is goodwill even if the result is harmful. An action is good. What do we mean by it here? It means is action. An action is good as long as there is goodwill in it even if the result is harmful. So your will is important here. That's the idea with Kant, Kantianism. So what we want to do has no importance what you're seeking but what we ought to do what we must do dutifulness is important here which is respecting which is based on respecting moral laws and how can we know that a moral rule is appropriate here we refer to categorical imperative proposed by Kant this is this will tell us whether a moral rule is appropriate or not. And it, it relies on, or it is based on two formulations. This categorical imperative is based on two formulations. The first one is, act only from moral rules that you can at the same time will to be universal laws. The laws that can be universalized. So, what if everyone does that? What if all the people do that? We should generalize like this. For, ex for example, uh, keeping our promises or breaking our promises. If everyone breaks their promises, it will be difficult for everyone. And when you universalize, it would be a contradiction. No one keep their promises. And you cannot extend it like everyone extend, except myself. We should think as the universal form. Like all people, all the uh, living beings in the universe, we just analyze like this. And we can uh, reach a conclusion that keeping promises good and breaking them are bad. That's the idea. And the second formulation is, again, a very important one. Act so that you always treat both yourself, be careful, yourself and other people as ends in themselves and never only as means to an end okay that's the idea you you shouldn't use any other people's humanity to reach uh, an ultimate aim or you shouldn't let yourself be used for anyone's ultimate aim too that's the idea that's the two sides of the coin here there there's an example from the textbook uh, suppose that the, a, a particular factory is increasing its uh, pr uh, integrated circuit production capacity from 8-inch uh, production to 12-inch productions, for example. But this will be a one-year project or one-year uh, customer. And then they will return to 8-inch production again. But for that particular year, they need workers. There are many good applicants, but most of them are from out of state. And during the interviews or during the uh, call, should I disclose that this is only a one-year test? Then let's say maybe 
most of the people wouldn't apply at all. Here, if you do not disclose, if you do not tell them what's going to happen to them, it means that you're using those people as production material, just like electricity in your ultimate aim. You're not treating them as rational beings. That's the idea with formulation two. So if you, you don't disclose here, it means that you're acting against the formulation two. And if one of them is breaking, either formulation one or formulation two, the categorical imperative is broken. And that means that that rule is inappropriate okay so if any of them is broken for either the formulation one or two is broken it means that that behavior is against the categorical imperative so both of them must hold in any case any analysis case so here is an example scenario to evaluate what Kantianism Carla is a nice person uh, he she is uh, living with her daughter on her own. She has a full-time job and she seeks a college degree for a better life, for better salary, who cares? And she has two courses left. Uh, she needs to complete five homeworks to pass the course, but uh, she didn't have time. She had some trouble. Instead of uh, submitting all of them, she submitted four of them, but bought one of them from the internet sites. Uh, and of course, they ask you to do the homeworks on your own. So, uh, here, did she do wrong by buying it from the web, or what she did was right? Evaluate it using Kantianism. Okay. Pause the video and take a moment to evaluate it based on the categorical imperative or something. Anyway, the result will be the violation of categorical imperative 2, for example. What you see here is Carla. And this is uh, the teacher, lecturer, lecturer here. And this is the, this is what? I mean... Uh, uh, the diploma, diploma, okay, <laughs> this is the diploma. So, as you see, it is against the categorical imperative, uh, second formulation of categorical imperative of Kantianism, so this action was wrong, you can conclude like this. I think uh, Kantianism is a pretty straightforward uh, ethical uh, theory that can be applied to scenarios in a straightforward way. Um, the case for Kantianism, what are the positive sides? It is rational. It can use logic to explain why behind solutions. We just discussed every moments before. Why an action is wrong. Why an action is right. I can refer to categorical imperative easily. That's why it is wrong, I say. That's why it is right, I say. And it is based on some universal moral guidelines, not uh, reserved for a particular group of people, for example. And all persons are treated as moral equals? Yes, yes, they are all treated as moral equals. These are the positive sides of uh, Kantianism. And let's take a look at the negative sides. Okay, it's not, uh, let's say, clear, perfect uh, approach. Otherwise, there will not be any need for other ethical theories at all. It also, it has some holes or some drawbacks, of course. Sometimes no single rule fully characterizes an action. Now, let's see an example given by Douglas Birch. Suppose that someone is stealing food for starving children. Okay, now, it, now you're in trouble. Is it stealing or is it caring for the, uh, let's say, people? Or is it for saving the innocent people? Not easy to analyze with Kantianism. And there is no way to resolve a conflict between rules. Ordering is not possible. You cannot say that stealing or saving innocent, one of them is more important than the other. It's not possible. You cannot order them. And Kantianism allows no ex exceptions to moral laws. It is unbending. Suppose that your mother asks you about her hair, like he, he made a new style of her hair, for example. 
Okay. Uh, I mean, kid, what? Uh, how does my hair look? He said, okay, it's ugly or something. Uh, I mean, what should you do here? Okay, I told him that it was nice. In fact, I knew that it wasn't nice. So it means that you lied. And it, it is, uh, for Kantianism, it would be wrong. But uh, you see, it is unbending. Even uh, you, it would make her... Uh, Happy. A simple action would be treated as wrong here. That's the problem. Is another problem with Kantianism. It's very strict. It's unbending about evaluation of cases. But uh, here we can conclude that moral decision making is based on logical reasoning from facts and commonly held values in Kantianism, and it is culture neutral and treats all human as equals. As you see, it's a rational ethical theory that we can use. You can come up with a question, it's natural. And you can ask me, sir, uh, I mean, uh, if uh, it has some drawbacks like this, suppose that we're trying to try analyze a, a scenario like this, and we cannot use Kantianism, isn't this, I mean, silly? Uh, I mean, uh, you say that this is a useful ethical uh, theory, but we cannot use it for this. Don't worry, we will discuss this at the end of this session, okay? Uh, there are several methods uh, suitable for, uh, several rational methods for, uh, to be applicable in different scenarios. That's the idea with rational ethical theories. We will see this, don't worry.